Are you European or of European descent? If so, then I have some good news and some bad news for you. The bad news is you're inbred. The good news is you're royal. Stay tuned to learn why every single one of us is descended from one of the most famous kings in history and prepare to have your view of your very own family tree changed forever as I reveal your startling heritage. For those of you who don't believe you have any European blood, worry not. I'm also going to share some fascinating insights into the family trees of absolutely everyone alive today as well. Just before I start, please do remember to like, comment on and share this video and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell switched on so that you never miss any of my uploads. It's entirely free to do. For more from me, you can also become a YouTube member to get member-only posts on my posts tab, badges next to your name in the comments and a shout out on my member's shelf. Or you can join me at patreon.com forward slash history calling where I release extra material every week, ranging from early access to ad-free videos to exclusive patron-only podcasts. The link is below for you. Emperor Charlemagne, if you're unfamiliar with him, lived between roughly 748, his birth year is disputed, and the 28th of January, 814 AD. He was the King of the Franks from 768, King of the Lombards from 774, and Emperor of much of Europe from 800. His name means Charles the Great, and although estimates vary, it seems that he had at least 18 known children by a combination of wives and concubines. That's an impressive number of offspring, but still, how can we be sure that we're all related to this guy if we have any European ancestry? Let's start with some basic genealogical facts. We all have two biological parents and, barring any really awful inbreeding, we have four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, and so on and so forth. Now, if we continue this multiplication process, by the time we get back about 40 generations into the 9th century, we'd have over a trillion ancestors. The thing is, that's physically impossible. That number would vastly exceed the population of the world at that time, which was only around 200 million. In fact, it would vastly exceed even the current world population of 8 billion. The explanation for what happened is something called pedigree collapse, which basically means inbreeding. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of inbreeding that the Spanish royals engaged in in the early modern period, where uncles were marrying nieces and double cousins were wedding each other generation after generation, leading to some very unfortunate results in the offspring. Just see my video on Don Carlos of Spain, stepson of Mary I, for an example of what I mean. Such unions will certainly have happened on occasion elsewhere in history, of course, but the inbreeding across centuries and millennia that I'm referring to here is the idea of more distant cousins procreating together very often. This means that many people will appear more than once, often a lot more than once, on your family tree as a result. So is there a point where all our family trees converge? Yes, there is. So let's talk about that next. In 2004, a group of scientists writing in the Nature Journal did a lot of computer modelling on population growth and migration to work out some date ranges for us. They estimated that globally, we all have what they called a most recent common ancestor. This was some unknown person who lived somewhere between 1415 BC and 55 AD, probably towards the more modern end of that spectrum, and whose claim to fame is that they are the direct ancestor of every single person alive today. We also have something called an identical ancestors point or genetic isopoint, meaning a point in time where, quote, each present day human has exactly the same set of ancestors. Think of it as being like an Adam and Eve type situation, but on a larger scale. It means, to quote a 2006 NBC News article about this research, that Every person who was alive at that time is either an ancestor to all 6 billion people living today, which would now be over 8 billion, because remember this is a quote from 2006, 
or their line died out and they have no remaining descendants. Our most recent identical ancestors lived somewhere between 5353 BC and 2200 BC, and most likely came from Eastern Asia, something the scientists writing in Nature attribute to the proximity of this region to both Eurasia and either the remote Pacific Islands or the Americas, allowing the MRCAs, the most recent common ancestors, descendants to reach a few major world regions in a relatively short time. So that's the situation on a global scale. Now let's zoom in to Charlemagne and those of us with European ancestry more specifically, which is still a massive chunk of the world population, of course. For this, we turn to a 2020 article in Scientific America, which explains our shared royal ancestry by saying that More recent than the global genetic ISO point is the one for people with recent European ancestry. Researchers using genomic data placed the latter date around AD 1000. Because Charlemagne lived before the ISO point and has living descendants, Everyone with European ancestry is directly descended from him. In a similar vein, and this is slightly off topic, but I thought it was interesting and so decided to include this part of the quote, nearly everyone with Jewish ancestry, whether Ashkenazic or Sephardic, has ancestors who were expelled from Spain beginning in 1492. So that's why we're all of royal descent, and why those who turn their noses up at the fairly moderate inbreeding in the English royal family line, where even first cousin marriages were actually pretty rare, should be careful who they're criticising. We're all inbred to some extent, and honestly, a lot of us whose ancestors came from small towns and villages, even as recently as the 20th century, are probably more inbred than the British royals have been historically. It's just that a lot of people can't or haven't done their complete family trees back five or six generations to see it. If you have Irish ancestry like me, though, I can help you with that, as I've written a book called Find Your Irish Ancestors Online, which is available as both an ebook and a paperback from Amazon. It's not going to tell you how exactly you're descended from Charlemagne, but at the very least, it should hopefully help get you back to the mid-19th century and in many cases beyond, and all from the comfort of your own home. It's linked below for you, and if you do make a purchase, I'd be very grateful if you'd leave a review. Not many people do, but it's super helpful with the Amazon algorithm. Now, despite our shared lineage from Charlemagne, which I for one find quite mind-boggling to contemplate, but who am I to disagree with science, I have to disappoint some of you by saying that although all Europeans are descended from the Emperor, not all of us will share his genes. This is because not all of our ancestors contributed equally to our personal genomes, as each gene we have comes from just one of our parents, not both. Thus, some genes that our ancestors had inevitably got edited out of their descendants' DNA over time, and eventually, this means that we have some ancestors from whom we have received no genes at all. One calculation done by geneticist Graham Coop of the University of California has estimated that you carry genes from fewer than half of your forebearers from 11 generations back, which is really not that far back in the grand scheme of things. This is a bit confusing, I know, so here's another explanation of the phenomenon from a 2015 article in the Guardian newspaper written by geneticist Adam Rutherford. Half of your genome comes from your mother and half from your father, a quarter from each of your grandparents. But because of the way the DNA deck is shuffled every time a sperm or egg is made, it doesn't keep having perfectly as you meander up through your family tree. If you're fully outbred, which you aren't, you should have 256 great-great-great-great-great-great grandparents but their genetic contribution to you is not equal. Before long, you will find ancestors from whom you bear no DNA. They are your family, your blood, but their genes have been diluted out of your bloodline. Even though you are directly descended from Charlemagne, you may well carry none of his DNA. Does this mean that it's safe to go back in time and kill your nine times great-grandfather, for instance, no, gang, I don't think so. Even if you don't share any of his DNA, killing him before your eight times great-grandparent is conceived would disrupt the sequence of events which ultimately led to your birth. 
so all you time travellers out there will still need to be careful what you're doing. Rutherford pops up again in the 2020 article from Scientific America, which I already mentioned, where he made a very good point that all the racists out there won't like, but that's just tough. The article says that, Because the genetic ISO point occurred so recently, Rutherford says, in relation to race, it absolutely, categorically demolishes the idea of lineage purity. No person has forebearers from just one ethnic background or region of the world, and your genealogical connections to the entire globe mean that not too long ago your ancestors were involved in every event in world history. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, I've linked all the articles I used and quoted for this video in the description box for you, and would highly recommend you take a look at them. They're fascinating reading and will go into far more detail than I have done here, as I've deliberately tried to keep this video as simple and accessible for as large an audience as possible. I've also popped a biography of Charlemagne in the description box, now that we know that so many of us are descended from him, as I thought you might like to learn more about our illustrious ancestor. It's available from my Amazon storefront too, which is linked below as well. Let me know in the comments how far back you're able to trace your family tree. I'm sure we'll get everything from people not sure who their biological parents are to people who can take one or more lines all the way back to Charlemagne's time. And if you're interested in getting started with your genealogy journey, you can get a free download about how to interview family members about your family tree from my website, historycallingofficial.com, by signing up to my free mailing list. For more episodes about DNA and how the genetic inheritance we have from our ancestors affects us, watch my videos on at-home DNA testing, the inbred Don Carlos of Spain, and how the Black Death affects you. Yes, you, sitting here in the 21st century. Whatever you choose, please enjoy, and until next time, keep learning.